you know, something I used to always get at my concerts. Oh, I've never heard a bass before. I never knew that was possible. I never, you know, like that we that we can kind of move onwards from that. I had a great time talking to today's guest, one of my favorite people in the bass world, such a cool individual. I'm Jason Heath. This is Contrabass Conversations, and we're talking today with James Oasey, who does many things, including being the founder of the Dutch Double Bass Festival. And this year, this fall, is going to be its third iteration, its third edition. He has such a good lineup. Dave Holland, Ben Williams, many, many other people. Derek Hodge, we had him on the podcast recently. So we get into that, the idea behind the festival, what it was like running the festival the last couple of iterations in 2017, 2019. How can we not bring up the pandemic? And uh, we talk a bit about that. And it's just really exciting to see James doing this again and James and his team doing this again and to learn about it sounds so exciting. Quick shout out to our sponsors, Upton Bass and Ear Trumpet Labs. More on them later. And here we go with this conversation with James Oasey, all about the third edition of the Dutch Double Bass Festival. How you doing, man? Oh, uh, well, and you? Good to see you. Yeah, nice to good, hear your voice. Good to see you, too. It's uh, Yeah, it's been a minute. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, indeed. <laughs> and not much has happened in the world, you no, know, in the last few no, years. Nothing. Nothing. Very, very sedate. Sedate year and a half or so, right? Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Indeed. Well, I'm oh. so glad that you're making this happen, though. It's so cool to see events coming back and and base events coming back. And, like, we, yes. just, we just started getting back to doing doing things in person uh, like in june here so i've been to a couple yeah. events and it was like i i you know i'm never going to take anything live for granted ever again you know right isn't it a tonic half. yeah isn't it a tonic for the soul my goodness <laughs> yeah no it's it's great like i had i you can almost see my base in the corner there so that oh, base yeah. yeah i did not that base did not leave my condo between march 2020 and like <laughs> you know not too long ago but i i went down to los yeah. angeles for uh, uh, base camp, the Raboth Institute, and oh, and I cool. I hadn't played with any other humans. You know, I I don't play yeah, in an yeah. orchestra typically, so yeah. I haven't done any of those weird spaced out concerts. But but yeah. it was so great. <laughs> Get off the plane, and within forty five minutes, I'm rehearsing a bass quartet, and then we're playing yeah. in front of people and coaching, and it's just it's it's been fun to get back to being in Isn't person. Isn't it again. wonderful? Yeah. yeah. No, I I remember there was a, a there's a group that I play with here, and we had a rehearsal sort of in the middle in the middle of the whole thing i think it was because we recorded an album as well and it was in uh, july that we recorded so then we got together in like june this mm -hmm. was 2020 mm -hmm. and it was like so and it was in a huge church with like a lot of space so i mean it was fine um but it was uh uh it was we all sort of noticed like oh it's the first time we play with other human <laughs> beings in a, <laughs> in a very long time and uh how refreshing that is. I know. Um, yeah, no, it's, uh, it's, it's crazy. And indeed it's, uh, uh, that the, the festival is going to happen is, uh, is I think much needed. Uh, and it, it's funny cause it's kind of organizing it with being, you know, it, it keep keeping us really busy here. Um, but it's true. I've more people have said, Oh, I think this is going to be like one of the first big, like, you know, definitely base events, uh, mm -hmm. for, since uh yeah since before this 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 whole thing and uh and and how great that will be <laughs> yeah i hope i mean everything always feels like like yeah i don't know it's a uh, it feels like everything you have to you plan for everything and then but you also know oh maybe <laughs> maybe there'll be another lockdown i mean i don't think there will be but uh um yeah yeah, I, I'm curious because, like, here, I would if you would ask me a year ago, I would have fully expected to still be locked away in my home. Like now in yeah. August 2021, yeah. I just yeah. the way things were going here in the states, and it's like it's like yeah. we're watching what's happened in Western Europe a lot. It's kind of yeah. like a sneak preview about what we're about to get. You know, like yeah, with it's the... yeah, yes, <laughs> yeah. Now I know what you mean. Actually, it's funny because we had that here as well, even just within within Europe, with in different periods of this whole thing that at some point, like some. Uh, 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 orchestras in Germany were already just giving concerts and and I mean it was all like distanced and uh, but there were people and and I know for here there was a long period when ensembles and orchestras were giving concerts but only but with no people in the audience and so it was all just so I remember seeing the first like videos like live streams where there were people in the audience and being like oh <laughs> you know oh and I remember I think the first 
I, th- I, I might be wrong, of course, but uh, but it, I, I, th- I think London was like, I think the UK was the first to just have normal concerts, like that you just have the audience and it's not social distance and everybody just tests to go in. And I remember like reading in one of the newspapers, I think it was The Guardian or something, and they said um, that there was applause at the tuning because <laughs> people were just like, yes. Uh, and I remember reading it and being like, oh, gosh, oh, wow, they're, they're a few steps ahead, apparently. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, isn't it? Yeah, well, we're starting to get back. That, so so Broadway and the theater scene has come back. Yeah. I saw uh, well, I saw great. a preview performance of Hamilton two weeks ago, and it was oh, cool to like, wow. actually be back in a concert you know, with yeah. human, humans in every seat. And yeah. um, so, and, and yeah, you know who knows as we're talking you know but, but i also doubt that we're getting another lockdown at least here in the states you know yeah. even as as the delta variants come up and there's all that yeah. you know people yeah. are are like we're gonna manage we're gonna get you know yeah. it like yeah. like nobody's yeah. canceling seasons or anything yes. like that and so yeah. it's good it's um uh, so that yeah. makes me happy they sent all the kids back to school in person pretty much everywhere oh, in the states great. that i know yeah. of so yeah oh, that's so, great and i would it made yeah. me so happy to see you announce the the festival and to see uh because so you got dave holland You've yeah. got um, Boz- Bozo Paradic, right? Yeah. Bo- Bozo Paradic, yeah. Project. Yes. Yeah, I'm so bad at his name. I love his bass playing and I'm <laughs> my, my Me too, me too. Okay. And actually, I mean, I should, uh, uh, we had we had a, a really nice FaceTime a few months ago and I never asked him if I was saying his name correctly. Um, so actually, I need to, I, I do need to ask him that. Um, <laughs> but, uh, and I'm of course also a huge fan. I mean, he's one of these, yep. you know, heroes that we have. Mm-hmm. Um, but indeed, we have... Uh, the, the, we, we, we're announcing um well now we're announcing the whole lineup um and uh, uh dave holland and he, he will be coming as as we've already announced uh, and he'll be playing with uh, john schofield boja project will be playing with uh, the basis of netfall because one thing we like we're trying to start this or i guess have started this tradition of uh um giving a bass section uh uh of a great orchestra the stage each year and letting them come up with a concert and so the first the first festival the first edition it was uh rotterdam philharmonic with edixon ruiz uh from berlin phil uh and that was that was great that was really really great uh and then the last edition was uh, the basis of a uh, concert about orchestra here in amsterdam and now it's um uh, the base section of the netherlands philharmonic and their their principal is luis cabrera mm-hmm is amazing uh spanish really young spanish guy um and he uh, teaches at guildhall as well i think and in rotterdam uh, and so they will be playing all eight of them will be playing uh, uh and with uh with bojo uh, as soloist so that that will be great uh and i've got i mean i've got like my whole list here of everybody who's uh because we've we've uh till now we've we've only announced uh Three, uh, three of the the acts that will be performing. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, we have also bass guitar since last uh, edition, because mm-hmm. uh, we kind of want to unite uh, <laughs> unite all of us, you know, bass uh, bass friends. Um, and so for this edition, we have uh, we have two bass guitarists. Um, uh, one is we announced already that is uh, Hadrian Ferro. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, the other one that we haven't yet announced, or that this is now being announced, uh, is uh, um, uh, Kinga Glick. She's a um, Polish uh, bassist, and she's a really good. And I must say, it's funny. I wonder what, how is this for you? I. I like as the years go by, like there are always these new uh, or new to me young people coming up, and it feels like they're getting younger and younger every <laughs> every year, and at the same time getting better and better, um, which is which I find great actually I must say, but it's also sometimes that you're like oh wow I guess uh, I guess I can pack the bass up now, <laughs> you know? um, and so actually and and one thing that we're also doing and please feel free to interject if I if I ramble too much on a uh, go off on a tangent uh, is uh, the the festival has a theme for the first year and our oh. theme this year. Yeah, is uh, the revolution of the bass player. Uh, because one thing that's kind of struck me, and I think it struck many of us bassists over the last, I mean, I realized the other day I've been playing double bass for 20 years, which is a little bit frightening, but is that uh, there's been like such a, a revolution that has happened. Like the like players have gotten better and better and better and they've gotten younger and younger and younger. And I feel like with the internet, everything has become more connected. And so there isn't this idea, you know, like I remember my teacher when I, when I started learning, which was already, I mean, I think I start, I must've started 
yeah, in like 2001, which which already sounds like not that long ago, but <laughs> but I remember my teacher who was uh, who was not old. I think she was in her 30s. She she had started on a cello that was tuned to a double bass because when she was a girl of 13 or 14, you didn't have basses that were appropriately sized. I mean, just that, you know, just the fact that that's completely different now and that we have this knowledge that is being shared like so rapidly, I feel like you see, you now see really the fruits of, of all of the hard work that has gone into it, into that, and also the progression of the technology. Uh, so I, somebody else uh, who will be playing at the festival is a young uh, Dutch bass player, uh, Sasha Vitevain. I don't know if you know her. No. Uh, oh yes, I do. Yeah. I had her. I had her on my podcast. Oh, it, it, amazing! It, 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 oh, it took great. a minute, but yeah, yeah, yeah. she's a, she's a monster and wonderful player. Oh, I forget God. how old she is now, but she's, she's like eighteen. Eighteen. So, but, <laughs> yeah. but like like su- su- such fantastic playing. I think. Yeah, I think oh, I talked to her a couple of years ago. She was maybe sixteen yeah. when I had her yeah. on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. No. And so she will be. She'll be playing. And indeed, I mean, she's. I heard somebody describe her as her playing is 18 going on like 45. <laughs> like she, <laughs> she is so good, you know, it's crazy. And, uh, and she'll be, uh, she'll be giving a concert with uh, Dominic Seldes, uh, who is of course the uh, uh, principal basis of the Concertgebouw Orchestra uh, and a local, uh, local to the Netherlands kind of hero in, uh, in the music they call it here in the Netherlands cabaret, but it's kind of different than what we think of as cabaret. Uh, but his name is uh, Mike Baudet, and he's an amazing pianist. Um, but he also writes songs and um, and is kind of also a comedian. Uh, but the three of them have, have worked together before, so they're all going to be uh, doing a concert together. Uh, so that'll really be great. But it's, I don't know, it's one of those things where I, like, Sasha, uh, you know, embodies to me this this revolution of the basis you know somebody who's so young and so good and so like I don't know relaxed about it you know like mm-hmm. uh yeah I don't know I feel like that's a that's something that 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 is also sort of more of our time this episode is brought to you by Ear Trumpet Labs. These are hand-built microphones out of Portland, Oregon, and they make an excellent mic for upright bass called Nadine. Barry Green got to try out this mic at her 2020 online bass summit where Ear Trumpet Labs was a sponsor, and he was singing its praises all weekend long. It's an instrument-mounted condenser mic with an incredibly clear, natural sound and great feedback rejection. It's durable and works with in-ears, monitors, you name it. Not to mention, Christian McBride, Barry Bales, and Missy Raines are all Nadine users. Whether it's classical, jazz, Americana, or bluegrass, this mic seriously delivers, and they're offering a free t-shirt, especially to Contrabass Conversations listeners with a purchase of a mic. Just visit www.eartrumpetlabs.com slash Contrabass to claim yours and check out Nadine. After several years of planning, I'm so happy that my course, Beginner's Classical Bass, is out on Discover Double Bass. This course is made up of 66, yes, that's a lot, <laughs> video lessons which cover a wide range of topics on classical double bass starting from taking your bass out of the case which is very fun <laughs> to film and Jeff Chalmers of Discover Double Bass and I have a great blooper reel about that and leading to different bow strokes such as staccato and portato the topics also include posture simple scales and arpeggios left hand technique bowing technique simple pieces which are fun to play practice tips and much more you can learn more through the link in the show notes or just visit discoverdoublebase.com slash jason heath yeah i hear you i mean it's it's interesting i remember i recall a discussion from a few years ago i was having with somebody saying like the bach the the prelude to the bach first suite cello suite that's going to become a middle school piece at at some point and and i remember thinking i played that on my master's recital you know back in 2000 or something like that but i as i and 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 sasha is a great example i'm we're seeing some people here in the states that did start on those little bases that you're talking yeah. about. George yeah. Vance here in the States started some people, and mm-hmm. some of those people have now reached into their 20s, and they've gotten yeah. positions in major orchestras, and yeah. they really, that was a middle school piece for them. So it's just interesting yeah. to see um, the, you know, this all accelerate, and obviously the internet has a huge effect, Crazy. getting access to these instruments has a huge effect, yeah. and, and it just becomes more normal, you know, so it's, it's really interesting to see something that I, like, you know, I thought that was um, a major undertaking, and it was for me, that Bach first suite Sweet, but you know it's it's kind of crazy to to I'm hearing more and more people you know doing that on like a quarter size base these days. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Which which of course actually makes sense because now <laughs> because you know I mean the, no, but you are absolutely right. I mean, and it's funny because I know I used to hear like 
the older generation say things like this. Like I remember once years ago when I think I was, I think I was 18 or 17 and I uh, took part in the Sperger competition in Germany. And I remember meeting Thomas Martin there for the first time. And he said to me, you know, he was like, yeah, when I was, you know, your, your age, I didn't even know anybody who played, you know, I can't remember if that's exactly what he said, but it was really dramatic. You know, it was really like, like that you thought, wow, I, I can't even quite imagine it, you know? And I remember when I did my, my master's in the Hague and, and my teacher here saying, saying, yeah, well, I remember the first job I got in an orchestra, uh, you could play, uh, what was it? It was something like you could play Eccles Sonata or you could play uh, Hindemith for your audition. And I played Hindemith and I was the only one who did. And so I got the job. <laughs> and, I, and I remember thinking, oh, wow, how the times have changed. But uh, yeah, it's, it is fascinating to see. But I must say what makes me so happy about that is that it you see that with the standard that it, that has gone up, the the perception of the bass is is changing, mm-hmm. um, and and I think not only for for people sort of uh, outside of the bass world, uh, which is very much kind of what we're trying to aim our festival at. You know, is trying to help that change that 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 people that there's not a you know that people don't find it so odd to go to a, a solo bass concert for for example you know they think oh wow i've never or like you know something i used to always get at my concerts oh, i've never heard a bass before i never knew that was possible or i never you know like that we that we can kind of move onwards from that and uh and and, and into you know into the 21st century where it's uh just uh you know it's just as a uh, as normal as uh, going to a violin recital or a piano recital or a, you know, or seeing a solo piano with, with, with orchestra or solo cello with orchestra. Um, and I, and one thing that I feel like um, kind of gives, yeah, what can I say that, that I've always found interesting about that is that you, you see that in the jazz world, that mentality is already different. Like it's not right. I mean, it's yeah. not, there's, there's nothing, uh, revolutionary about a solo bassist in the jazz world that's just like normal you right. know right. yeah uh and that, which is great i think it's uh you know and uh which is you know also obviously partly why why we program a lot of jazz at the festival as well yeah it's something um, i've thought about a lot over the years i, I remember a, maybe two three years ago larry grenadier whenever he was promoting the yeah. gleaners that album he came to san francisco yeah. and played uh, and so it was a friday night i was watching a set at sf jazz one of our main venues here in town mm-hmm. and i was thinking like i'm essentially listening to a double bass recital i don't even know yeah. if i call it jazz. i mean this is like an yeah. arco bass recital alternate tunings in one of the yeah. major concert halls packed house and just how normal it is and i think one of the things i love just at least watching the 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 additions you've done of the dutch double bass festival and kind of how you market it is i think we we can get really good in the bass community of talking to ourselves and we kind of know what's going on but to project that out and like you're saying connect with the audience and let people know and normalize you know Mm -hmm. hey it's not you know yeah and there will hopefully come a day when every concert you play won't be like wow i didn't know the bass could do that and i think i think (laughs) what you're doing is going a long way toward that it seems like well thank you thank you that's you know that's the that's the mission that we're <laughs> on <laughs> so uh that that's great to hear um yeah and it i don't know it's funny i sort of think like in 50 years what like like what will be like what what will it, what will it all look like then you know um <clears throat> but um but yeah, no, exactly what we said. And, and, and actually getting back to that, because I'm sort of like looking at my list and uh, of, you know, uh, uh, the, 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 the lineup for this year. Uh, and uh, there are two amazing uh, jazz bass players who are coming. Um, one is uh, Derek Hodge. I love um, Derek. Color, yeah. color of noise. I think is his latest album. Uh, yeah, one of the most interesting. So Derek's coming. That's so yeah. cool. Oh yeah. wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm really looking forward. I've never seen him live, so so that'll be great. And he's coming uh, with a band that he's busy putting together. Um, and uh, I don't. Do you know Ben Williams? Uh, yes, I do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's and he's amazing, and he's also coming, and he's uh, he's also putting currently putting together a band to perform um numbers from his latest album and and one of the things that i was like oh that's so great uh when we when we when we reached out to to, to him and i didn't know this uh, uh we we um uh were told the story about 
how like apparently when he was uh, I think a teenager and he'd first begun the bass one of his first like experiences was going to Francois Rabat's um, uh, camp course thing and that was for him what kind of solidified okay this is this is what I'm going to do with my life I was like oh look at that but wow yeah. that's yeah, so cool isn't, isn't that cool <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah indeed so um yeah, no, that that would be yeah. I'm really really uh, excited to see both of them perform, um, and I'll obviously be playing. I, <laughs> I um um, and I'll be playing with uh, with a string quartet uh, called the Dudok Quartet. Um, they're a, a really amazing Dutch string quartet, um, and so we'll be doing a kind of eclectic program of some arrangements of our own and some um, original stuff. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so I'm like thinking, oh yeah, I have to plan rehearsals. <laughs> uh, well, I, yeah, and, and speaking of planning, I mean, the amount of time and energy that that it takes to put something like this together. I know that you're you're working with a few people, but this is your, yeah. you know, this, this the, your your. We're a very small team of people. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah. Like, like yeah. you know, I've I've done a couple much more modest events that I've organized. Yeah. Nothing near the size of that. But even that, whenever I've booked myself to play, I always know it's important, but I always deeply regret booking myself to play because i'm running around in administrator mode and like oh no they're not here they're there. is has yep. it you've played the other two editions haven't you as well i have and i've yeah. and, I, and i have luckily learned i hope something from that because <laughs> like the first edition i i made the mistake of programming programming myself at the end not at the very end, but on the second day, the beginning of the second day. And, and back then it was three days because we started with the dev master classes, but now it's just two days. Um, and so I was on day three, the beginning of day three, and it was an all Bach solo program. And it was just so like, it was really funny because I, I remember speaking to somebody like in the lead up towards the festival uh, who had had experience with the, the Dutch harp festival here. And she said, I hope you've not made the mistake of like programming yourself at your own festival. And I said, well, I kind of do have to play, you know, like, and I mean, I love playing. It's like, you know, that's like my, you know, what I do, but, but I said, no, well, yeah, of course I have. And she said, oh, well, I hope then you've, you've like, you've like programmed yourself at the very beginning. And I said, oh no, actually I haven't. And she said, oh, well, you'll learn. <laughs> you know? And she was right. And it was, I remember it was such a, Ah, uh, you know, it was it was because indeed you were so busy making because they and again like it was my first experience with anything like this and something that I hadn't anticipated is obviously while you're doing it you know it just overwhelms you with how much work it is and how much you're uh, you know you're the like. Uh, uh, you're the go-to person for 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 everyone even if even if there are other go-to people but once the first contact is made even if you say oh well you can ask that person about this people are still going to come to you you know yeah. uh, <laughs> and, which is nice but you know sometimes you're like oh I, I actually don't know um but uh so you're sort of crazy busy with everything but then the other thing that i kind of hadn't anticipated is that you have this very very large uh, feeling of responsibility towards everybody towards the artist that they have a good time because you know you you yourself are, are an artist and, and you know how important that is and you know you, you know you know what it takes to play and you know what it takes to you know uh, to to have a good time as a performer at something like this but also that the public is enjoying themselves and that there's not you know and that that everything's clear and that people know where uh, where the bathrooms are and people know where the coat check is and be, you know what i mean and they know what time this is beginning and what time that's beginning uh, and i hadn't kind of uh, anticipated that that would be so at the forefront because i because i remember you know some of the, the concerts uh that you know they had begun and 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 in our first location uh everything was literally under one roof like it was this huge old empty sort of tur turbine hall and so we had to all the sound checks we had to organize uh uh before the event started like in backwards order because you couldn't sound, you couldn't do anything whilst anything else was was playing and so on one hand that was kind of logistically a, a big challenge but it was fine but on the other hand it meant that whilst the concert was happening then the concert was happening full stop which I, I thought would give me a kind of sense of relaxation but it really didn't you know because you felt like well is you know is everything going okay Every, you know you don't worry about the musicians you know they, they're fine is everybody enjoying themselves you know is is the ceiling going to collapse I don't know you know is lightning going to strike uh, and so I remember by the time like the last day came I was just I was so exhausted and I remember the night before thinking thinking oh god I really need to practice because 
I had to play because Gary Carr came that year and he wanted to play Passione Amorosa with me, which, which, you know, I was honored. I was like, oh, that's, you know, really kind. And obviously you don't say no. So, but it, then I had to have my bass in solo tuning. And back then I never played in solo tuning. I really didn't, didn't like solo tuning, but I thought, well, there's no way around this. So I'm going to have to play my program in solo tuning too. And I had never done that before. I had never done that program in solo tuning. So I remember thinking, oh gosh, you really need to, you really need to practice because you need to get used to like, you know, all the, the chords and I luckily don't have perfect pitch, but, and I remember sort of at like 1130 at night, like going to the practice room and, and, and like just going through everything. And, and then I remember when the concert came and, and I mean, it went, I think it, it went fine, <laughs> but I remember it happening. And I just remember thinking, oh, this is like so much music. And it's, <laughs> and it's uh, you know, and I remember, and the, the funniest thing was that something else I hadn't anticipated was that, um, of course, they're like all these other bass players who you really look up to, you know, <laughs> and they yep. come and listen to you. And I remember like at some point, Edickson Ruiz, I saw him like out of the corner of my eye and I thought, oh no, like, why does he, why? <laughs> and then at a certain point he got up and I thought, oh, thank goodness he's leaving. Like, you know, the pressure will be off. But then he just came like much closer <laughs> and like came and to the, like the second row. And, and I was like, oh, this is so stressful. Uh, but you know, the, you live and you learn. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So this time, yeah. I will I will be playing on day one, which is the 29th of October. <laughs> <laughs> when you've built a reputation like Upton Bass has, the stakes are so high when you send out an instrument to a new owner. When people open that crate, man, the bar is so high. It doesn't matter if it's a $2,000 laminate bass or it's a $20,000 one-off. The bar is so high. Maybe because of the amount of time we've been doing it, the awards on the wall, the gossip, the reputation, the marketing. But by the time they're opening their crate, they are invested so much into us. They are expecting the world and, and we have to meet that expectation every single time. That's Eric Roy of Upton Bass, and boy, do they meet those expectations that people set. Yes, the bar is high, but it's high because of the quality of work they've done over the years. They stand behind their products, and they have so many loyal fans, including me. Check them out at UptonBass.com, and thank you so much for sponsoring the podcast. Yeah, the, the, you know, I, I, I did this event in the middle of the United States in Wisconsin, and the first year yeah. I played, and I found it very stressful. So the second year I didn't play, and it was much less stressful but then i look yeah. back at all the photos and it's just me holding a clipboard that's like, yeah. like there's no yeah. evidence i'm like i'm like this admin i i was we, we were doing an online event the pittsburgh double bass symposium is usually in person mm -hmm. but it was online this this spring and micah howard who's in the pittsburgh symphony organizes it and he always plays it's one of those cool things and i i think that's the move what you're saying you know but it's yeah. still like and and he had to restart the live stream and do all this stuff and then he and oh, then wow. and then he's like all right now i'm gonna play the entire bach third suite and you know, just wow. to go from what, and you could, yeah. he was like handling things on his phone and then doing this. Yeah. And then it's like, all right, now it's time to play Bach. And I was yeah. like, I was like nervous for, I mean, he sounded great, but I, yeah. but that, that feeling is, uh, yeah. And that feeling of having someone like Edickson in the audience, I, 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 I've had that, you know, you look in the, there's Gary Carr. Like, like yeah. you know, and yeah. of course he's like yeah. the <laughs> most, you know, happy wanting to hear you play, yes. think, but yeah. especially when you've been running around and alternate tunings you're not expecting, like solo tuning yeah. all of a sudden. And yeah. it's a, it's a, but anyway that's yeah playing first probably a good move but uh yeah. it's very cool that it's very cool that you that you you know are are playing for these as well i think that's awesome well thank you thank you yeah and i mean you know i always feel like uh i i'm always always trying to you know challenge myself although i must say within the last years like within reason um like challenge yourself enough to grow but not so much that you fall flat on your face you know mm -hmm. what i mean so i like it's one of those things that i that that I feel like, oh yeah, it's it's good, it's good to do this and get the right balance. And then afterwards, like I, I remember this from last, like like the last edition, which was in 2019, and definitely from the first edition in 2017, is that like every concert I had in the, the three, four months afterwards felt like such a breeze, you know? <laughs> it's just like, oh, you know, it's like all I have to do is show up <laughs> and play. And you know, and and I don't really, I don't know anybody in the audience and you know, have a good time. And it's funny. It's it's funny because it's and it's also something that 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 I, that I really part of the thing that I really enjoy with the festival is seeing that everybody, like no matter how big they are, has their heroes. And I remember that was <clears throat> the, the first edition and the second, both editions that you kind of saw, uh, uh, you, you saw these great players 
kind of get a little bit nervous, you know, mm -hmm. uh, because they were like, yeah, but you know, I want to go to his concert and I want to go to her concert and like, oh, I haven't seen her ever play live before. I haven't seen him ever play live before. And I mean, I remember the, the first edition Gary had a, you know, a, a timetable and he was like circling, oh, I have to see him and I, I have to see Edickson and I have to see, uh, I have to see, um, I have to see John Patitucci and I have to see, and I was like, oh, it's so like humbling to see that like, uh, the, these these people, you know, who who you know kind of have godlike status, have their inspiration as well, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that was that that every year I, I love seeing that, you know. And I remember last time, you know, uh, in two thousand nineteen, we had uh, we had François Rabath, uh, and and we also had uh, who was incredible, Renaud Garcia Fons, and you know, people are just like, oh, you know, the jaws are on the floor. Uh, and I know this year, and that was uh, so somebody else that, that that's coming uh, is uh, Florentine Gino. Um, I would I don't know if you know him. I don't. No, I don't think oh. so. Anyway, yeah. I feel I'll like he's up. like yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's great. Like I feel like he's kind of this like best kept kept secret. Uh, I I did know of him, um, and I knew of him as the bass player of uh, Ensemble Music Fabric in uh, Cologne, and I I had seen some videos of his uh, like some years back, and they're really really good, especially like modern music and some Bach. But then this year, actually, I had Dominic on the phone, uh, and uh, and I think we'd already programmed Florentine. Um, oh, I can't remember. What the what the, the order was, which came first? But <clears throat> I remember Dominic said to me, he "said Oh my goodness, have you seen this guy playing Bach Shukan? And I was like, "Do you mean Azarkin?" <laughs> and he's like, "No, it's like from now." And I was like, "Really?" And he said, "Yeah." He said it is incredible, and he said his bass is tuned completely wild. But you know, he said it's just it's just what it's like. Oh, it's like action. It's like music. It's you know. And and I immediately looked it up, and it was Florentine. <laughs> Uh, and he indeed he, he gave a concert in Cologne during one of the lockdowns, uh, and unfortunately the video is only on Facebook. Mm. I only stay unfortunately because I feel like if it was on YouTube it would have already been like you know uh, absolutely decimated in views. And um, and he plays like yeah, and he plays Bach Chacon by memory, and it's so good. It's it, yeah, I mean, and his bass is I think it's tuned in high. I think it's it's high D tuning, so it's like solo tuning up fourth or mm -hmm. normal tuning up a fifth, um, and it's so good. It's just like it's like a it's like a legitimate, you know, like you put, you put it on for your pleasure. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, and and so he's he's going to be giving a, a, a solo recital at the festivals, which I'm really looking forward to. I don't know what he's going to be playing yet, uh, but that's definitely something to check out. Like uh, him playing Bashakan, it's. Yeah, it's really yeah, yeah. No, I, <laughs> my words uh, escape me. <laughs> <laughs> well, w w was there any uncertainty about planning this year? Because I mean, you've been doing these every other year. Yeah. That the yeah. timing worked out to skip 2020 for sure. Yes. But like, <laughs> yeah, like, indeed. like, like, did you uh, at a certain point? Like, I, I mean, this is not something you just slap together in a couple of weeks. This is like you know, obviously months and months and months, or half a year, or longer, yeah, perhaps. No. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely no. And indeed, we we you know we were. Um, the good thing is that we get together quite soon after the last festival to discuss, you know, uh, the next edition, so on and so forth. Uh, and, um, and, you know, take stock of how it went and what could have gone better and what, you know, what do we want to do differently? And we sort of had that, those kind of meetings and they're always a little bit more relaxed because of course you've, you've just had it and it's, you know, uh, and then COVID happened and then, and then, uh, and I mean, we are, I think we are pretty good at being quite quickly, thinking about the next edition. Mm -hmm. um, and so even with those, you know, kind of um, evaluatory uh, um, meetings, we were already discussing, okay, you know, how are we going to do this different next time or, or what are we going to do differently next time? But then of course COVID happened and we thought, oh, okay. Um, because one of the, one of the things that, 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 that I'm also learning, uh, at least in the beginning stages of a festival like this, one of the difficult things is, is figuring out what the, what, what's a good time to have it. Uh, and I know, and I feel like in the first edition, it was kind of, we had like a sweet spot, like it was in the spring, it was the last weekend of May. And we got lucky that, you know, that 
it, I don't know, it felt it was kind of it was kind of just at a really good time. Um, and the second edition, we 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 had it like one or two weeks later, and that was kind of a challenge. Uh, mm. uh, we we realized only when we did it uh, because it was a long weekend and a lot of people on holiday, and there were just like a few of these things that you that we sort of thought, oh yeah, that's that maybe it's actually better to do it at another time. And so then when COVID happened, we're like, well, we're not going to be able to do it in the spring anyway. Uh, so let's, let's just move, move it, you know, like let's keep, let's keep it in 2021, but let's, let's move it far enough along that the situation should be safe by then. And things should be starting to resemble, you know, uh, normalcy. So now instead of having it indeed uh, in the spring, uh, it's going to be in October in the, la- the last weekend, 29th and 30th of October. Um, and I'm really curious um, what that's going to feel like. Cause of course, you know, like spring and, and autumn are very different feelings just in, you know, the zeitgeist and the, and the atmosphere, but of course that's all completely, I have no idea, you know, yeah. like it's going to be all so different now with COVID because as you say, you know, there is such a, a longing for a live event and a, you know, a celebratory event like this uh, that I feel like it's almost going to feel like spring, even though it's not <laughs> going to be spring, you know? <laughs> so, um, so no, it, it definitely, uh, um, yeah, it, it, it's, a, we, we, we lucked out on the, on the, you know, uh, on the skipping 2020 um, and, and things are looking very positive for, uh, for, the end of uh, October. So, I mean, I think, you know, I, I think, I think it will be, it will be, yeah, no, I think it'll be really cool. Uh, and yeah. 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 You know, it's interesting because yeah, spring, uh, you know, now I live in San Francisco where there, there are no seasons. So whether yeah. it's October or May or whatever, it's like the <laughs> yeah. exact same, you know, oh, wear the exact yeah. same outfit year round. It doesn't matter. Yeah. But, yeah. but those are really, I'm thinking back to my time living where we did have seasons. That is a different yeah. vibe. What's, what's Rotterdam yeah. like in, in late October? Is it, uh, are the leaves cha- have changed at that point or is Good it? Good uh... question. Um, well, I must say like everything here is also, a little bit different i mean obviously you know the whole climate uh 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 aspect of things and i and i know like now like the summer we've had has not felt like summer at all uh it's been not very warm and it's been quite wet mm. uh and uh which and, and the funny thing is i read a few weeks ago in the news that apparently the summer we've we've now just had or uh, you know the tail end at at the tail end of now is uh, a much more typical like it's actually the summer that the netherlands is supposed to have <laughs> and that like the summers of the last like 10 years have been abnormal okay. uh, <laughs> which is really really funny um but but in my like in my experience of the of you know of the country here in the years i've lived here is that it's like we're well and truly in autumn at the end of October, mm-hmm. but it's not yet the feeling of everything's getting dark. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And like that comes in November, but it's a feeling of like, oh yeah, maybe you have your coat on and, and uh, you know, and the leaves are falling and the, uh, but it depends. It Sometimes it comes much earlier. Sometimes it comes much later. So I'll also be very curious as to what, uh, what that will be like. I mean, I know, I remember like two years ago, October, the beginning at least of October was like, like you could walk around in a t-shirt. <laughs> it was really wild, but a year ago it was like really cold. So, <laughs> so yeah, it'll be, it'll be interesting. Uh, I think the coat shake, I think we'll have to make use of the coat shake. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Maybe, maybe more than, than the spring events. Uh, Dave, yes. And I love that. I love having a theme to the, to the addition too. I think that's really, that's a, that's yeah. a great idea. And going forward too, it'll be interesting <laughs> to see how that evolves for other years. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's, it's funny because it like the, the base, uh, um, I feel like there's actually so much, it, it opens up the perception much more, uh, and not only for, for like the audience, but also for the, for the players themselves. Um, when, when, when you have like a theme like this and you can, you can think of things in this kind of perspective, you know, and, and like I said, now it's kind of the, you know, the revolution of, of, the, of the basis. Um, and, and there are two artists we, we, we have who kind of also fit really well into this theme. Um, because what they do is so, is so different with the instrument. Actually, there are more, there are more artists, actually, I would say, I think three, three, at least three of the people we have on, on the lineup. Uh, and, and those are, uh, two young women, uh, uh, one has her own band and the band is called Mad Life. And again, I'll, I'll send you a link. Cause oh, it was please. like really, yeah, it's so, it's so good. Um, and uh, she plays double bass and bass guitar and she sings. She's like the front woman of this band. And the, and the, 
it's such fresh music like it's it's kind of like a little bit 80s but kind of like summer like pop music like it's so it's so refreshing and like to have this double basses, like, you know, leading the band and then switching to bass guitar. And it's, it's just so refreshing. Um, so she, she will be playing. And then somebody else who for me was a completely new discovery this year is uh, Juan Santa uh, Mendez. And she's a young uh, Mexican bassist. And she also sings and, and heads up her own, her own group. She'll be do, doing a completely solo, uh, solo uh, set. Uh, and 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 also like what she does with the instrument and she's only a double bass um it's so beautiful and it's so original and it's so you know it feels like it's so much of this time and you feel like oh yeah there's really like where we are going uh collectively with the instrument is is so exciting when you see players like this come up and really you know add something new and like their own voice um yeah, and and so that's uh, again. I'll send you. I'll send you a link <laughs> uh, of hers because for me, she. I mean, she was a new discovery, and I was like, "Wow, this is uh, this is super exciting." Um, uh, yeah, and cool. we have for the first time uh, Viola da Gamba. Oh wow! The, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. great. So that, yeah, and that'll be uh, Robert Smith. Um, okay. Or yeah, we call him Bob, but sure. uh, <laughs> uh, and he'll be giving a, a solo concert. So that'll also be also be great. Wow. It's going to be yeah. so fun making these discoveries and finding people and then to be able to bring them in, into the public eye, like, you know, with, like with this yeah. event, it's, I can tell yeah. you're, you're so passionate about it and, and find the people and yeah, you're getting me excited. Yeah. Please, please be, yeah. send, me, send me some of those links and it's, uh, <laughs> I will. Yeah, it's, I will. it's incredible. I will. No, I will. And you know, one of the things that, that really, that, and I really believe in this, uh, uh, and it's kind of how I listen to music as well, is like this cross-pollination, you know, that you have, you have like the Derek Hodges, but you also have the Bojo Paratics and the Dominic Seldeses and, uh, and, and, and they all have their own audience, but then they all kind of come together and you end up seeing things that you would just never see uh, if you didn't come you know and I, I, feel, I feel like I'm kind of <laughs> advertising but it but it, I feel like it really is true because you see and I remember that happened last uh, edition with um with <clears throat> especially with Renaud Garcia Fons that you know he has his following but there were a lot of people who had never heard of him mm -hmm. but they're there and and maybe they came for like Richard Boner and then they stay and then they see Renaud Garcia Fons and they're like wow like how did I not know that this existed and you see them just like beaming from ear to ear and and then, and it's so it's so nice to to be able to see that happen, yeah. and and have this like like cross pollination of 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 of, of audiences and and ideas and 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 people, uh, and like I say, that happens also on the you know on the end of the players, but but especially with the audience, uh, and that that is really uh, exciting, and I I get very excited myself about that, yeah. James, thanks again for chatting. Always a pleasure. Folks, check out more info. We've got it linked up to in the show notes or go to ddbf.nl. I love those short URLs like that. And they're on Facebook. They're on Instagram. James maintains a really cool Spotify playlist about the folks that are coming. And yeah, announcing more and more people every day. Maybe he's got the whole lineup announced by the time we put this out. But such an inspiring individual. And I will go to this one of these days uh, for sure. So thank you for listening. It's great to hear about events coming back like this festival. And I hope that you're doing well no matter where you're at. Of course, there's all sorts of variant news and that kind of business as we continue here in 2021. So far, I, I had a big round of travel in the beginning of the summer, middle of the summer. And I'm back in San Francisco for a bit doing a little more travel in early to mid-September. And then I I think it settles down until I'm going to Chicago for a week in November just for fun. And then I'll be in Chicago again for work in mid-December. So yeah, it's it, we're, we're closing out August here as I'm recording these, the first of four. I always do these in batches, or I have for the last while. And uh, the, you know, I'm trying my best to not read the news uh, overly much, um, which does nothing but stress me out and just trying to work on projects I find interesting. We've got our internship program. Uh, we're, we're working on the details in the back end now. We have some great applicants. We're talking to them over the next couple of weeks here. And yeah, we're going to have some help 
again for the podcast, the blog, everything that we do here with Contra-Based Conversations. I wish I had been a little more intelligent with branding all this stuff <laughs> back in the mid 2000s. Uh, never start multiple websites, folks. It's always a bad idea. But uh, yet here we are uh, persevering. So I guess I'm calling it a Contra-Based Conversations internship just because that's this podcast, though we do many things beyond this podcast. Um, so anyway, uh, if you're interested in applying in the future, we'll have another episode about that or that'll be linked up to or we'll put out in our email newsletter which has been getting more and more popular every month if you haven't subscribed to that it would be great to have you on board for that you can get more info at controversyconversations.com along with links to the the podcast although you're listening to this so maybe you don't need that uh, on any platform you like we have an app that I always forget to talk about free app if you are an app person and like listening to podcasts through an app that's cool an app dedicated to the podcast and yeah it'd be great to stay in touch uh feedback at controversy conversations.com is my email for the podcast and i love hearing from folks whether it's just to say hi that's always awesome or a guest idea or a topic idea for the podcast or for a video which i've been pretty consistent about for the last year or so so um yeah would love to hear from you thank you so much for listening thank you to the team that helped me put these together each and every week michael cooper steve hinchy mitch mooring and trevor jones mitch makes beautiful bases, has a great business in Kilgore, Texas. Mitch Mooring Strings makes award-winning bases. Learn more about everything he does at MitchMooring.com. I'm your host, Jason Heath, and we will see you again soon for more life on the Lone of the Spectrum.